Welcome to another edition of Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Gary Cassie. Have you ever driven down the road and saw a beautiful house and you said, I wish I owned that? Or you drove by a field, maybe a thousand acres of uh, wheat that was blowing in the wind, ready to be harvested, and you, I wish I owned that. Your phrase has already given you a key, a major key to changing your life. You know, you understand something that you can't enjoy something you don't own. And that's true. You'll never enjoy something that you do not legally occupy. That's the topic of today's program, because if you'll learn how to take territory, learn how to occupy territory, you're going to change the standard, the, the ability to enjoy what you occupy. You say, oh, Gary, I don't know how to do that. I, I, I didn't either. But you know what? There are principles and steps you must take to get to the place of destiny or occupation where you actually enjoy the benefit of owning it. In today's broadcast, I'm going to take you to a series that I began at Faith Life Church where I laid out the 10 steps to taking territory. No, you can't short circuit the process. They're in order. 10 steps to taking territory and enjoying the good life today on Fixing the Money Thing. Now, we're starting a series called Taking Territory uh, this month. This is the first session. And to take territory, well, you'll never enjoy territory you don't occupy. So we've got to move. You have to change. Everyone loves change, right? Oh, yes, we do, right? So 10 steps to take territory is today's message. So get your pin out. You need to know what we're talking about today to get you down the road. Judges chapter 6 is a chapter I've taught out of since we began the church. I love this illustration. I love it because it's so clear of the steps that you must take to win in life. So let's dig into the first uh, verse of chapter 6 of Judges. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites, because the power of Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain clefts, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, Amalekites, and other eastern peoples invaded the country. They camped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep, nor cattle, nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count the men and their camels, and they invaded the land to ravage it. Midian so impoverished the Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help. Number one on your list, write these words, something's wrong. In Europe, if you were going to take a step like up steps or down steps, in the States, we say, watch your step. In Europe, they say, mind the gap. If you've been there, it says, mind the gap. So let me ask you a question about this story. Israel, of course, came out of Egypt. When they crossed the River Jordan, they were given an inheritance of land. Now, remember, they had been slaves for 400-some years, and to own their own land was their prosperity. Agriculturally, that was their prosperity. So they have that right. So legally, they own the land, but now we find them hiding in mountains because the enemy has pressured them off of whose land? Pressured them off of whose land? So legally, that's their land, correct? So the first thing you have to ask yourself is what is legally mine and why am I not enjoying it? There's a gap. You say, well, how do I know it's legally mine? The Bible says every promise of God is yes and amen. And if you see your life dysfunctionally compared as God describes life, there's a gap. Would you agree? Now, you can put up with it. You see, people learn dysfunctional ways of thinking. For instance, they can live on credit cards forever. They've learned to live with credit cards. Credit card is their security. And they'll go for years and years thinking nothing of it and also not dreaming or actually thinking it's possible to pay cash for a car or a house. They have trained themselves, trained themselves to put up with dysfunction as a way of life. To them, it is completely normal. But until you measure it against a standard, you do not know you're missing it. And so the Word of God defines the standard. The first thing you have to do is, there's something wrong. That's our land. We should enjoy. You see, the Bible says they planted, and when they plant, they expect a harvest. 
and you are doing the same thing. You, you have good intentions, but you're just not getting the harvest. Instead of saying, oh, well, oh, my, you need to say, why not? Something's wrong. Mind the gap. There's a reason why, okay? You need to ask. That's the first thing. You're not going to change something you accept as normal. You've got to find the problem. Find the problem. Mind the gap. All right? What is legally yours? Number two, what did they do? Midian so impoverished the Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help. Good move. Until you mind the gap, you're, you're kind of surviving. But when you find the problem, you need some help. You would have already fixed it if you could have. You need to cry out to God for answers. He, he knows everything. You need to ask him. You need to cry out to God to help you know what you don't know. And God's response is step number three. In verse number seven of the same chapter, it says, when Israel cried out to the Lord because of Midian, he sent them a what? A prophet. A prophet in those days carried the word of the Lord. Now, you don't need a prophet to come and prophesy to you what God's will is because you have the Holy Spirit in you. Prophecy in the New Testament confirms and edifies. It does not lead. We are led, the Bible says, the children of God are led by the Spirit of God, and we have that inward witness on the inside. But in those days, they had prophets. So God sent, God sent them a word. The prophet carried the word. He sent them a word who said, this is what the Lord, of, uh, the God of Israel says, I brought you up out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians. I delivered you from the hand of all your oppressors. I drove them out before you and gave you their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live, but you have not listened to me. Everyone say, correction. correction. You need corrected. Now you you may think that's a negative term. That is not a negative term. If you were heading for a cliff, going down the wrong road, would you want someone to correct you with the correct information? Of course you would. The Bible says righteous people embrace correction. We, we want to be corrected. And so the Holy Spirit needs to correct some things or teach you some things. I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.